Hi friends! Welcome back to my channel. You are probably watching this video because English is not your first language and you are debating of like whether you should use English or your first language in your YouTube channel. I really understand that struggle because although I might sound very fluent and like very confident on YouTube right now, I actually struggled with this before. And that is because like although English is my first language, I actually grew up speaking in very broken English. I grew up in a very Malaysian family and my mom actually only started speaking English when she married my dad. Which means that like her English is quite bad and I grew up in that environment so my English was super roja. Um, which means like we mix English, Chinese, Malay, Hokkien and sometimes we even come up with our own words for certain things. And so like even though my I can speak fluent English growing up, I was not confident with my English because I felt like it was bad. And the only reason that I'm able to get to where I am today, it's because I speak a lot and I've been practicing and practicing and practicing and I'm just more comfortable today. And that's why I want to share with you my two cents today on whether you should use English or your native language on your YouTube channel. I'm not saying which one is better, it's just my view on both of this and hopefully that can help you decide on which language you should use for your channel. So the main reason that most of us want to use English for our YouTube channel is because we want to reach out to a wider range of people. Which makes sense because most people understand English better. And I'm serious that like I would prefer if you could do YouTube video in English because I understand English myself. If you are speaking in a language that I cannot understand and I search up for the content that you share, I won't be able to learn from it. So what happened recently is that I actually bought this microphones. Um, it is a dual like lavalier mic that I'm planning to use for my interview sessions and I was just trying to learn how to set this up with a DSLR. And so I searched up on YouTube how to set it up on DSLR and all of the videos that came up, they were all in the Indian language. Okay, I don't know whether it's Hindi or Tamil or like whatsoever, but all I wanted was to learn how to set this up and I couldn't find one that explains it to me in a language that I understand. And that was when I realized that like, even if they do have an accent, even if the English is bad, if it teaches me, if it helps me with like what I was looking for, I wouldn't mind. So if you are not so confident in speaking in English because like you're worried of your accent or you're worried that your English is not perfect, don't worry about it. As long as you are providing a content that will be helpful for people, that people want to be entertained with and want to watch, you are fine. So right now, I'm going to speak to you in my Malaysian accent to prove that point. Okay, ah, so this is the Malaysian Wendy, ah, I tell you. If you see la, even though I speak in an accent that is quite different la, um, and like you know I add like certain things inside and like my accent is quite bad, but you understand what I'm trying to say because you get the grasp of the language. So you see there are YouTubers out there with their accent. For example, Denlock. Denlock, okay I sound so funny. <laughs> but anyways, Denlock has his accent in his Chinese accent. But he was able to show up in that confidence, in that charismatic order, and to share really valuable stuff that although he has an accent, you still trust him in his content and want to watch more of that. And then there is Martin Yen. I don't know whether uh, you watch, uh, watch his video before lah, but I grew up watching his video and although he has this Chinese accent and sometimes his English is, is a bit funny, but I love watching his video because I want to learn how he cooks, like the recipe that he has and all that stuff. So, you get what I'm trying to say? I am just switching back to my usual YouTube way of speaking because that sounds a little bit weird. But you understand what I was trying to come across. That although I was speaking in a more Malaysian, monotonous tone with like certain Malaysian um, accents and like, you know, extra words in it, you get the gist of what I was trying to explain and you are able to follow that video. So whatever accent that you have or whatever grammatical error that you are going to make in your sentence, as long as you show up with confidence and you are able to provide people content that they are searching for and that they want to watch, then it's more than enough. 
I do understand though if you are just really, really bad in English and you are just not comfortable in it. I have known people like that who would avoid speaking in English in all costs and if that is you, then speak in your native language. Although you might not be able to reach out to like a big a wider range of people as we were talking about earlier, you will be able to reach out to the right community who can connect with you. So you see if I'm a Chinese and I create content in Chinese, I believe that like people who are in a Chinese community, they would love that video. They would feel like, okay, I can really connect with her. I understand what she's trying to say. And I feel like there's a sense of familiarity that helps me feel like, yeah, I like this girl. She's like me, we speak in the same language. And I just shared about this in my previous video. I was talking about how personal brand is truly powerful when it's authentic. And that's true because people feel familiar and like they can connect with you. A few examples that I have who are doing amazing in their YouTube channel in their native language are Victoria Wong from Indonesia. She's only 17 years old and she's creating content in business tips and like self-help tips and in public speaking tips. And it's all in Indonesian and like I don't understand it always. I kind of sort of understand it but I love that she's putting out this content and people love it. You can see that she has a lot of views, people are actually engaging in the comment section and that is all that matters. Another example is Grace from livygrace.co who shares about business tips in Cantonese. And also same thing, although it's in Cantonese, I don't really understand it. She's giving amazing valuable content that I believe that the Cantonese audience are loving it and they are like, you know, totally digging in. So you see, whatever language that you choose, as long as you are providing like valuable content and you come across as a confident person, you're comfortable on screen, that's all that matters. Because at the end of the day, YouTube is something that's more like a long-term thing. You are going to create tens and hundreds and thousands of videos on YouTube if you want to keep growing. And definitely you want to find something that is comfortable for you. So yes, English is amazing. I would love to see more content in English as long as you're comfortable in it. But if you're not, do it in your native language. There's no excuses as to why you shouldn't start doing a YouTube video. Where all of this debate that you have, it's just in your head. Just get started and look at me. I started with like no confidence at all and like I would say that today I'm super confident and comfortable in front of the screen. And in fact, my next video is going to be about how to be comfortable in front of the camera. So if that's something that you want to watch, then be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for it. Also, watch these two videos if you want to watch more girl boss or motivational content. I will see you in my next video. Bye!